Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're taking a look at Transformers Generation Selects number 11. This is the Decepticon Exhaust. For anyone not in the know, Exhaust is based off of a Diaclone toy that was retooled from the figure that would go on to become the original Wheeljack, and as such looks a lot like Wheeljack. Now the original toy was modeled after a real-life race car that had sponsorship decals from the Marlboro brand of cigarettes. Uh, it's back in the 80s, you know, they weren't all too worried about marketing cigarettes to kids. But times change, and between laws uh, preventing, you know, advertising smoking to children, and also Marlboro's own very vigorous protection of their own, you know, copyright and everything, uh, you can't have that exact design anymore. And this became a big thing when they released a masterpiece exhaust a few years back. They had to alter the whole design on the hood of the car to you know, kind of make ends meet. So here again, it's gonna be loosely based on the original G1 design, but well, Diaclone design, but you know, altered to make everyone happy. Now, interestingly, this toy, as of recording this, has still not been officially announced by Hasbro. This toy and the other Selects figure, Grease Pit, were both discovered through eBay listings where somebody was selling for 30 bucks a piece. And uh, I decided to abstain from purchasing those because I couldn't trust that they hadn't been stolen from somewhere. It seemed very likely that that's the case. So I opted out of picking those up, but then a, an online retailer called Megalopolis Toys got them in stock for uh, July, I think it was like July 3rd release date. So I'm like, all right, this has gotta be the, the legit thing here. Um, I expected, you know, that date would coincide with an announcement. Well, the announcement still hasn't come, but the toys have been shipped out and delivered to me. So I, I really don't know what's going on there. I can't imagine this retailer, which seems to be very reputable, you know, is messing with stolen products. So it seems to just be kind of a failure of announcing distribution on Hasbro's part, where they sent these things out to retailers before actually announcing them, which wouldn't be the first time something like this has happened. Now, that lengthy aside out of the way, let's start this review. If you know what I do here, you already know that we're gonna take a look at the box real quick, open it up, see the instructions, and then we're gonna see Exhaust himself in both his vehicle and robot modes. Naturally, I'll be doing some comparisons with the Earthrise Wheeljack toy, and at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So the box here is your standard fare selects packaging based on the War for Cybertron trilogy. It's been very consistent. Got the cool spray paint looking Autobot symbol. Got your Autobot text, the logo, all that. You can see exhaust right here on the front with this numbering. And that's really it. Legal stuff here. Now opening this up. Open. Here we go. Got your usual inner lining there. Exhaust front and center. You can see that sweet new head sculpt he's got. It says uh, Bandit on his foot there, which is interesting. And uh, can't see it very well yet, but we'll get into the interesting typo he has. Here are the instructions and standard Earthrise stuff. Oh, one thing worth pointing out so he's called Decepticon Exhaust. Uh, but he's actually branded with the mercenary symbol, which is he's the first toy to actually carry this And you can see it right there in his chest, too So interestingly, he's not You know, he's called Decepticon exhaust. He's not officially a Decepticon. He's not yet Oops, there's that extra little bit of paper So open this up See it just shows off where you can place a shoulder can in there and then your transformation into vehicle mode Wraps around on the back, and there's the vehicle mode. Okay, and here is Exhaust's vehicle mode, based on the original car used for Exhaust and, you know, by extension, Wheeljack. And you can see it's complete with all these racing decals. You see you got Bandit right here on the front, on the spoiler. And then you have his name, Exuast. Yep, Exuast. Then you get over here, and uh, still says Exuast. Along with the racing number, 598. It says Royal down here. Uh, Japanese for something, I don't know. Here you have a 7 with some 
dice. I don't know what the reference is. Might've been present on the original car, I'm not sure. Same thing over here. So yeah, the, the exhaust typo just persists throughout the whole thing. Somebody managed to misspell this thing three times. Don't know how you do that, but it's unfortunate. This gun up top, obviously it can rotate, it can come off if you wanted to. Revealing his uh, mercenary symbol there. And overall, just a nice looking little race car. The windshield is translucent, so it helps hide those robot bits underneath while still being somewhat see-through. Uh, underside's quite clean. The only real robot kill you can see is the back of his head, so not too bad there. Overall, despite the egregious typo, it ends up being a very nice vehicle mode. Now here, of course, is Wheeljack for comparison. And aside from the obvious you know, design differences with the decals, um, the big thing is that exhaust is a much brighter uh, white than Wheeljack is. And, you know, it's funny because one of the things I didn't like about Wheeljack was this really, I don't know, dingy, almost beige color that they did him in when his renders made him look much closer to this bright white. And I really would prefer to be as closer to this color. I don't know why they went this, with this really dingy color for Wheeljack. He looks like an old toy that was left out in the sun too long and just suffers from photo degradation all over the whole thing, which makes me wonder, maybe when they were designing Earthrise Wheeljack, if, like for reference, they used an old Wheeljack toy from the 80s which had been out in the sun and was actually that color and they just didn't know any better? Maybe. I don't know. It just seems like a weird choice because he's always been depicted as being pretty stark white. Uh, anyway, uh, they do enough different with the overall color layout to where they do look like two different cars. Uh, you can see the design alterations I mentioned for exhaust. Normally, this hood would have the red kind of coming down in a triangle pattern to mimic the old uh, Marlboro cigarette design there. Probably for the best, it doesn't still look like that. Now here's exhaust robot mode and it just looks very cool. See the new head sculpt on display here, which, you know, emulates the redone head for the original Diaclone toy. And just neat. I'm happy he's got something to help differentiate him from Wheeljack. They have some similar design motifs, but overall it's quite different, especially down to the eye visor, sort of a mouth visor. Uh, I have him wielding his little pistol or whatever in his hand, though you can always attach it old school style right here. Just be careful because that tab is painted black so you could scrape some of the paint off. So overall he looks very very cool. Now this is where a major QC issue comes into play on my version of the toy. His knee right here, very loose. Doesn't fight gravity well at all. It's only on that one side. Now I don't know if it's just my copy or if this toy is already having some mold degradation really be a shame because it's only had one prior use and normally they last longer than that. So I'll just hope it's a one-off. Something else I noticed, and I don't know if it's the same with Wheeljack and I just didn't notice it or if it's more prominent on this guy. So when you're transforming him to his vehicle mode, right, you'd pull this down and you'd swing the head down. Now this really does not want to go. I found if you kind of pull it out and then down, it'll give much more easily. Now, I don't remember having that issue with Wheeljack, and I don't know if I just didn't notice it, because maybe I just was doing it the right way from the get-go or not, but uh, just be aware, if you get your copy and his head is really hard to flip down, just pull it away from his body as you're flipping it down. It'll make it a lot better. Now, for comparison again, here's Wheeljack. And you can see their overall color layout is pretty much the same. Uh, biggest difference is that exhaust doesn't have any silver paint on his little, whoops, on his little back wings there. I just left them white. But again, that's just a paint app because the plastic on Wheeljacks is that white color, tannish color. And then the only other real difference I could see in the layout is the shoulder hinges where his are black plastic and then Wheeljacks match most of his body. Um, that's really it, you know. New head, some paint deco differences. Not too much to separate them, but I mean, there's precedent for it, right? They're supposed to be based off the same toy, makes sense. So, as far as which one's better, uh, I mean, 
It's up to interpretation, right? I do like the white on exhaust a lot more. I just, I feel like Wheeljack would have been better served with a much brighter shade of his primary color. Uh, the head, I really like it. I think as a design, it is a cooler head than Wheeljack's design, just for what they are. Though, obviously Wheeljack's head design is much more iconic. The one thing that's probably hurting exhaust and might edge Wheeljack in as the better toy is the factory error with the misspelled name. Because I mean, come on, the, the QC, let's go guys. What is the deal? And again, the tolerance problem that I'm having, which I'll wait till I see other reports of that to see if it's you know more widespread or not. Because if it's just my copy, then I would say don't really worry about it. But man, that the egg zoo ass thing just gets me. How do you guys screw that up? Three times, right? It had to be designed. I mean, let, let's, I'll be generous to say two times, right? Because the two are identical. You had to make two separate designs and spell it exuast. Why? So anyway, if you like the Wheeljack mold, you'll probably like this guy. If you don't like the mold, well, well what do you expect? Uh, I think he's worth getting personally, as long as you don't hate the Wheeljack mold, just because um, he's an obscure character that has only had one official toy release so far, and that was Masterpiece. Unless you count the Diaclone toy, that's not a Transformer technically. Uh, he is the first officially branded mercenary character. You know, they say Double Dealer is a mercenary, but he only has Autobot and Decepticon logos. There's no mercenary faction anywhere, so this guy still holds that distinct honor. And overall, he's just cool. He's a, he's a nice little bit of Transformers history. It's got a neat little design. It's simple. Uh, you know, like I said with the Wheeljack version, really could have gone with some more accessories. Which that reminds me, I noticed on the back, kind of hard to see, I just noticed, so you got a, a port here, which is nothing unusual, right? These weapons are made to be modular, but it's a port with like a little notch carved into it, like it's supposed to specifically fit another accessory. That's got me wondering if Wheeljack didn't originally come with another weapon, maybe something more akin to his, you know, handheld gun from the original. And, you know, they were going to plug in together and make a bigger weapon, and that was just dropped later. It really kind of feels that way. Wheeljack and, by extension, Exhaust do feel like they kind of skimped on the amount of stuff you get for your 20 bucks. But that's an old gripe, and it's not going to get any better unless they decide to actually release some version of this mold with more weapons. Who knows? So, yeah, that's how I feel. I think he's worth getting. Obviously, pretty hard to find right now. So there's supposed to be a Fan First Friday coming later this week. So I would expect Exhaust and Grease Pit to be officially revealed then and then probably go up on polls. Again, I don't know why they trickled out the way they did. Kind of strange. So whenever he becomes more available, I'd pick him up. He's cool. Now we get to the most important part of this. What do you all think of Exhaust? Do you think he's a good interpretation of the character? Do you think he's a worthwhile re-release of the Wheeljack mold? Would you prefer to see something else? I know a lot of people are saying they want to see a slicer from Wheeljack, which we still can get it, right? It's only two uses so far. You could definitely see a slicer down the road. Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like, let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. And thank you for joining me for this smoking look at exhaust. Yeah, I went there. And with all that said, I will see you next time.